Everybody. It is April 12th, 2021. Coming at you live from Austin, Texas. We are. We are. Hi, we Justin. are. Hi. 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 I commute now. You commute. You're a little I'm bit a of a commuter. commuter. I get on, I check the traffic. When was the last time you had a job where you had to like go to a, the same place? Go game was the last one where I had an office. And so um, I, uh, uh, I would drive in and now I'd, I haven't had to do that in a very long time. Although I very much missed, I miss, I miss this. I miss the like, go to a place uh -huh. and, and you know, chop it up and you know, yeah. hey, how was the weather? Oh, a real scorcher out there. And Ooh. you know, you just do a little bit of that, especially when you have a creative environment and, and everybody's benefited by uh creative ideas i really like that uh and this time i get to just leave <laughs> like when i when i want to i can just get the fuck out like and that's great like i love that the uh, this is really you know all my favorite things all wrapped into one <laughs> wait are, are are we oh man i i hesitate to guess but are, are we comparing this to uh, other television experiences? No, no, no. Other work environments. Because uh, uh, I was talking about um, uh, that I was I commute now oh, on, on Mondays. Yes. And so I like, yes. I very much miss having an office. I, I miss talking with people and, and interacting. When you're by yourself, it's obviously a very solitary right. situation. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, with the go game, sometimes I would have to like stay or even worse, like work, uh, <laughs> and, and this, it's like, 
I'm here so we could do the podcast and I love doing the podcast. It's very exciting and uh, uh, I get to do that. And then I I just go. I just get in my car and I and I and I F right off. There's there there's a couple of like middle grounds, right? So it's like like we've got the studio. Now obviously if we're in the studio we're 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 this is we're on stage, right? Yeah. Uh uh we're building out the green room, which We'll explore that later on, but it's like, that's going to be its own kind of like pre-energy, like getting ready to get ready. You're feeling it. You're feeling it. Yep. Uh, There's the editor's room, which is like, yeah, you're pretty much having a meeting if you're in there, you know, but, but. Humming uh, fluorescent lights. uh, Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Exactly. But, but then the, um, uh, uh, one of the weird middle grounds will be. Uh, right now we have three suites that are designed for people to stay in. But if you show up with a laptop, you'll be able to just plug that HDMI in and it's kind of an office where you can lock that door and go about it, do your work. Right. And so, I don't know, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see how that develops. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I, it's, uh, as, as excited as I am to be doing everything, I may say, I'm equally excited to see how it all turns out because, yeah. because I, I, I don't know what we're going to end up loving the most. I mean, this is, uh, 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 this place is a science kit that is like, just add people. And you were like, just about to pour in the people when people became illegal. <laughs> <laughs> when then, people were substituted for poison. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, we can't do that. And you've, and you've waited a, a, a year and change, and, uh, and, and you're, you're about ready to start pouring that people. Well, pill. and uh, 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 we've said it before, but, but it's like uh, they, there were no gifts in 2020. But if there was... Uh, it's the fact that we seem to be much better prepared for 2021 yeah. <laughs> than, than we otherwise would have been. 100%. That's, that's a very shining silver lining. That's a, that's a very, <laughs> that, is, that is beyond half full. Beyond very, glass charitable, half full. <laughs> very charitable. Very <laughs> charitable, says, says the man who lost an awful lot in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys want to do a weird thing show? Let's yeah. do the show. All right. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with, uh, in person again, Justin Robert Young? In person forever. Oh. Get used to it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, uh, clutch your pearls. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm here. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't want to say listeners. exactly what Justin texted me, but he said, I did not give up certain comforts of California <laughs> so that I could Skype in. By the way, hit me up after this. I got something. We can figure that out. Uh, yeah. I got Brian, a New York Brian, Times article for you to read. Brian asked me, and Brian asked me if I was Skyping in, and I'm like, Brian, I didn't give up legal weed so I could Skype it. <laughs> like um, I'm moving, I moved to, to Austin so we could do these shows in person. Uh, for the record, I really enjoyed getting to play older brother of like, uh, oh well, let's go into the attic and let's take a look at your uh, oh AC my AC broke. Yeah, that that's a whole oh, other thing. I loved it. I loved it. I loved also it. joining us, Brian Brushwood. Brian Brushwood. Yeah, sorry. Here. Hey, it's me. Hi, Brian. Uh, welcome, welcome back to weird things. I've got a, uh, this is mostly an audio podcast, so I, I'm going to need you guys' help for this. Yeah. Uh, I've got an image here. I'm going to pull it up on screen. Uh, can you describe this image to me? Uh, okay. First of all, it is most in. of the movie posters from the early aughts in that it has, <laughs> it, it is, it is all it's, it's either the orange and, and blue, and amber, right? Yeah. Or, <laughs> or the like, uh, uh, frozen. <laughs> And all the frozen sequels in in in, in light um, blue. It does look like some kind of snow and uh, sunset on dunes. Okay, which it's 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 more bluish than I would expect to see from Mars. I almost want mm. to say that it's like a like a mosaic of some sort. Like it's all like a bunch of pictures that oh, like are a filter that are organized. What? Well, not no 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 like if you zoom in far where, enough you see happy days yeah yeah it's one of it's one of those things which i don't think it is no all right uh, uh any other last guests I, th- uh, I think one of you was very very close i you know what i guess i will i'll commit mars. to mars yeah 
Commit to Mars. Committing to Mars. Uh, all right. Well, this is about 31 kilometers of uh, what NASA has called a sea of dunes on Mars. Yeah! <laughs> uh, in fact, the entire, quote, sea of dunes uh, is about as large as the state of Texas. Uh, and this image that we're looking at is a false color image. So the the cool and 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 warm colors, uh, I believe, represent the Are, surface temperature. They're enhanced. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So so uh, also uh, the stars nope. at night are big and bright. <laughs> Deep in the dunes of Mars. By the way, you're in the club now. You get to you get to every every time people compare it to Texas, like that that asteroid, <laughs> sir, it's the size of Texas. You're like, yes. No, oh, you know, like yeah. you, you, you get to have that Texan pride. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so this was captured uh, from a combination of images from the thermal emission imaging system instrument on the Mars Odyssey orbiter. I thought that's pretty cool. But and this is, I mean, these are uh, you know effectively sand dunes but in in such i mean imagine how how big is the sahara is the sahara about the size of texas i'm gonna google sahara bigger than texas is, uh, uh, is sahara what, bigger you know than what texas? uh last time i didn't uh i didn't i don't believe that was part of the republic it was <laughs> never its own country Te texas is two and a half times bigger than the western sahara Hell never yeah. mind yeah no Hell screw yeah. this <laughs> yeah nailed it got him again boom you just imagine a huge undefeated a huge <laughs> undefeated <laughs> name one time we were name ever defeated time. that doesn't rhyme with the schmalamo exactly <laughs> doesn't count doesn't count uh uh yeah so so this is uh uh on on Mars, and sorry, uh, Bryce, I missed how how this was taken uh, with with a thermal emission imaging system. So it, it it's like a temperature reader, basically. Yeah. Basically. Now, now, is this from, uh, from uh, orbit? Uh, 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 one of the things I like about space is that um, we tend not to be jingoistic or or nationalistic or whatever. But, Except all the Texas stuff we just did. Well, uh, oh, okay, that <laughs> doesn't count. States rights. Doesn't um, count. Uh, the the uh, <laughs> uh, but 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 was was this an American orbiter or like an ESA or a? Uh, an... This is the Mars Odyssey orbiter, uh, which right. I believe I, is a NASA. Na NASA put this image. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's an American joint. So. Yeah. Uh, face your <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say that no i, 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 I just implied it very that was heavily me squeaking my chair yeah, that's okay. just what comes out <laughs> what's interesting uh this is fun this image uh this image could vote uh these images were captured between december 2002 and november 2004 Wow, I would, I would love. Well, I guess maybe not. I would love. Uh, so wait, why did it take? Did, did you just like <laughs> take a while to download on, on your on. phone? Like, I, like I want to, I want to pay, I want to pay two hundred dollars to Bryce <laughs> to see if he can actually get that image to vote. Alex <laughs> 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 shows up with like certificates saying how old it is, and he's like, "It's old enough to vote." I don't see what I the just, problem is. I just like the idea that it was taken in two thousand and two. This is like, my well, ID why, card. Why, why, why haven't we gotten it? Well, it took five years to invent the iPhone, <laughs> and, and then really, it's like by the time we needed five G to really download it, and then at some point, the head of NASA is just like looking at his phone and it's just like, whoop. Mars Odyssey. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so this was put out because uh, it is a 20th anniversary of the Mars Odyssey. Quote, the longest working Mars spacecraft in history, end quote. Oh, so, th so they're just like doing cool stuff. They're like polishing up stuff that it's taken and, and re-releasing right. it. And uh, uh, the Odyssey is an <laughs> orbiter, is the, the, right? The, it's right. just a satellite that's constantly taking lots of pictures. Um, man, there was a great article about like all of Mars' greatest failures, you know, like uh, yeah. the time that we whoopsie doodle used inches instead of centimeters and then just <laughs> didn't get anywhere near Mars. Oh, wow. Um, uh, so uh, another topic here. Uh, how much would you say in your daily lives are asteroids and comet dust? How much do they integrate with the kind of the daily the daily workings of Brian and Justin. Comet I mean, dust. Comet I, I, dust. I used to be terrified at all times. Like there's something about the inevitability of sooner or later, a rock is going to smash into our planet and we're going to die. That when you're 18, it's like you have no excuses. Like when you're 16, you can't process it or diseases aren't real yeah. or whatever. But then, but then it's like you're 18 and then, 
you know, Deep Impact and Armageddon are coming out in the same yep. summer. Yep. And then you're like, no, wait, that's how the dinosaurs went out or whatever. So um, uh, day to day, you eventually move beyond it. But it's, it's, it's real. But that's worrying about like an impact. Like this is just comet dust, right? Like would, 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 would we get hit by like a gigantic wave of dust like right before we we got hit with it would a, certainly with a rock. explain why when you said brian i'm moving to austin yeah i started to cry because it was because there was comet dust in my eyes that, they, were, they were tears of jupiter that's that's right drops that's, of jupiter oh what damn, yeah. damn it whatever <laughs> <laughs> no, it, whatever. You got it. <laughs> so there's. A... <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just glad yes, we have a back rational... in the atmosphere, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a new paper in Earth and Planetary Science Letters that reports on how much space dust lands on Earth every year. Take. I'm, I'm looking for guesses here. How much space how much? dust lands? So is this going to be in, in, in inches in or ma- feet ma- or mass, mass, mass or volume? Uh, in uh, pounds. In pounds. In, in mass. In pounds. Yeah. Local mass. Uh, 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 three pound, 12 pence. <laughs> Okay, no. three. It says three. Okay, you know what? Lock three, it in. Lock it in, Jay. Lock it in. Sorry. All right. Three pounds, twelve uh, pence, twelve p. It's, <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be ten thousand pounds per year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, this is one of those ten, things. Ten ten thousand pounds is about, uh, about twelve Subarus. You could literally <laughs> tell me a so garbage. So I'm gonna say. Dump. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say twelve Subarus. Twelve. Lock it in, uh, Daniel. Yeah. Twelve Subarus. Uh, if, if you told me God, a garbage, I didn't dump. know we were doing night attack again. This you, is great. <laughs> if, if, if you told me a garbage dump or a coke spoon, like I would, I'd be like either way. I would be unsurprised. I have no idea how much space dust. Twelve lands Subarus. Under. Twelve Subarus. In fact, uh, Corey okay. is is not normally allowed in, but but Corey just shouted out. Do you know the answer? No. Okay. What do you think? Okay. To review, to review, the answers gathered so far are 12 Subarus or 3 pounds, 12 pence. No, it, it's the whole Earth flying through space. It's got to be like 100 tons. 100 tons. 100 tons. Uh, <laughs> so just to... <laughs> Let, let's hope he's not TDing next week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the answers again are three, 3.12 pounds. Yes. Uh, Brian, you said... You said 12 Subarus. Okay, how much is, was that? Was that <laughs> Look at the weight of the Subaru. Yeah. <laughs> he had a real it's, answer it's, before it's, that. It's, 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 it's about 10,000 pounds is what I'm saying. 10,000 okay. pounds. 10,000 right. pounds or 12 Subarus. And, and, and Corey suggested about 100 tons. 100 tons. That's a lot. All of you are way, way low. Oh. This report, this report says when you sit around the dust, <laughs> you really sit around the dust. <laughs> this report says about ten thousand grand pianos worth of space dust. Or <laughs> hold on, hold on, time out, time out. Or- Somebody came up with a more messed up <laughs> metaphor than I did. I went for Subarus, no, and they say grand more pianos. Understandable. <laughs> what is this? It's a, it's a, uh, according to Doctor Hannibal Lecter. Uh, yeah, this exactly. many harpsichords. This is, this is, this is the real, the real, a real Reese's pieces of, of answers. I'm so not fancy. With this again, I'm not engaging. So <laughs> fancy. <laughs> so fancy. That is five thousand two hundred tons in a single year. Oh, so holy less. moly! More. You said ten thousand pounds. Uh, he said ten thousand tons. You just said. <laughs> you just, it doesn't matter. Five thousand tons. Uh, uh, you, you gave me two different answers. I'm just going to put that on the record. People can re- rewind. Yeah. But he did I, say I, 12 Subarus. And I don't know what that time. is. I don't care if I'm right. I just want Corey to be wrong. That's that's okay. Corey was closest. Corey mm. was closest. He got halfway there. Uh, 100 tons is not halfway to 5,000 tons. Oh, you said, wait. This is 5,000. Oh, I thought you said 200. 200. I thought you yeah. said 200 tons. 5,200 tons. a lot of grand Five, Oh, I, 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 I mentally blocked out the 5,000 part. <laughs> Uh, hachi machi. So, what what happens? I mean, I guess nothing. Like we've just lived with this in our our, our entire lives. Like we don't have any, uh, uh, like like if if we light 
a, a match? Does space dust explode? <laughs> What's happening? So uh, most of this comes from asteroids and comets. About 80% come from comets. Uh, they're the biggest single source of space material on Earth. Yeah, just they fly around and eventually they shoot. They, they, they land here. They are um, very small, the space dust. They are about 1 50th the size of a grain of sand. So it's not like we get a lot of usable material out of this either. We also lose a certain amount of like um, very light gases like like helium and so on, right? Uh, uh, hydrogen. Sounds, sounds right to me. There. Okay, I'm there. Where do we lose it? In the uh, junk drawer? Into space. We're oh, into space. Yeah. 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 We, 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 actually, we lose the much Greedy like, ass space. You know what we lose? Uh-oh. It's not the same. Yeah. Follow me here. Okay. Okay. Patrons. Oh. Patreon.com oh, slash weird things. That's where we want to keep you. Yeah. So that you can pay for the show. Keep us loud, live, and independent. Indeed. I moved to Texas, and that means that this show is going to continue to get better and better. Uh, uh, we will. We You're will. the grand piano of Texas. <laughs> I am. That's something that uh, was. It, the, uh, what you don't realize until you move to Texas is that when you cross from New Mexico into West Texas, driving from California, they issue you a nickname. That's right. And so it's like it's it's uh, uh it's like the Sorting Hat in Harry Potter. Yep. Uh, but it's a it's a they ten pull, gallon they pull, hat. They pull you over. Uh, they're wearing all green, and they have the dog walk around the car. Yeah. And they smell inside, and they're like, "Sir, are you carrying any fruits and fruits and vegetables?" And you say, "Uh, uh no, I'm not." They're like, are, "Are are you coming to visit or to stay here?" I, I bought a house. Okay. Uh, who's this over here? Uh. <laughs> Silent Bob. I don't si know. Oh, okay. Uh, are those birds I see? Oh, yes. Yes, they okay. are. Yeah. Well, welcome to Texas. You are the grand piano. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and then they just start waving. <laughs> yeah. Like just waving you by. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? And they just start waving <laughs> faster. And they're like, you'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and, and everyone knows. Like you just walk into a gas station and they're like, oh, howdy, oh. grand piano. And yeah. I'm like, oh, like. And it goes out in a bulletin that it's texted to everybody. So yeah. I'm the grand piano. You're a patron of this podcast, patreon.com slash weird things. Get the after things podcast, uh, uh, which is only going to be bigger and better now that uh, we're actually working on a lot of cool stuff. And spoiler alert, uh -oh. in the next few weeks, month or so, it's going to be a great time to be an after things member. If you want to get an x-ray and behind the scenes. Oh my God. Wait. Are you, are you saying what I think we're? Can, there may or may not be things can, that are can, coming down the pike. Gentle hint. I think I, I, I'm going to hold my. You knock away this pinky if I go too far. <laughs> There's a thing we're working on. Oh, okay. Well, that was. Oh, he got the slap. Oh, yeah. That's we're, uh, already thing too we're working far. On. Already too far. Yeah. Right. Uh, there you go. Patreon.com slash weird things. Thank you everybody for your support. Uh, guys, I got a question for you. And I'm I'm looking for answers here. What do we have in common with snakes? Uh, uh bellies. Be okay, bellies. Teeth. Teeth. Yeah. Eyes. Teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, eyes. Perfect. Our exes call us cold blooded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. We're sneaky. S mm, it's more of an anthrop. Uh, sneaky. Uh, okay. Humans can be sneaky. I guess snakes can be too. Uh, I regularly shed a snakeskin's worth of dandruff every day. Occasionally, people have orgies. <laughs> Predilection to orgies. <laughs> Google that one. I don't think I'll be doing that. Do snakes and humans <laughs> autocomplete have a predilection for orgies? Well, uh, a new paper suggests that... Uh, Hold on, we're not done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Go ahead, okay, go okay. ahead. A new paper in the Proceedings of National Aca of the National Academy of Sciences suggests that uh, maybe a, a genetic connection that we have with snakes is saliva, our saliva. Uh, the, the researchers looked at 30 uh, habus, I believe is how you pronounce it. This is a type of viper from East Asia to see how 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 genetically they make venom, right? How how do yeah? How, how do they how make venom? how is venom formed? Right. 
Um, they found that there's a connection between the protein production genes um, and uh, saliva secretion in mammals. So the, the, the same genetic markers that cause us to salivate or uh, really any other mammals are tied to the venom making genes uh, in uh, in snakes. So wait, could we hack our bodies to make venom? One thing that they they hypothesize that humans could eventually one day evolve to develop venom. Oh my God, this is a Tom Clancy plot point. Uh, I agree, Justin. I find it quite sneaky. <laughs> Don't be so suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I uh, uh, my child plays a game in which they find people sus. Just short for suspicious. <laughs> Thank you for the oh, correction. Yeah. Well then, well then, Brian, my favorite letter is S. Oh. All right. Well, clearly we don't have much. It's just the Russian nesting doll of bits. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine though? Let's say hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of years in the future, but yeah. society looks kind of similar to the way it does today. Let's say we we snap evolve in one day. A baby is born, and the baby has, has venom. venom, right? What what it, what does it look like when humans develop venom? Well, I mean, when when I, I think it would probably be fairly identical to another kind of defect because it would probably clash with our biology and create other medical problems. All right, I, are, I, you, I don't, are you about to that... say the Second Amendment again? <laughs> that it, this would be a violation, <laughs> or, or no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, it's, uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, that, uh, 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 okay. So, if the question is, hear me out. Hear yeah. Me. What if humans all were born overpowered, and at any okay. given moment, okay, yep. they could take each other out? Yeah. Then, number one, they would be very polite to each other. Uh, with, uh, would uh, they? Uh, uh, or or would, would we just divide into warring factions and just constantly battle with each other? And if you like, does snake venom? Was snake venom dangerous to other snakes of like the same species or type? Because that might oh. not be the case. Oh, how would we You're divide our venom? What if we were immune to bullets and we're born with a six shooter in our hand? <laughs> and it's like, what's up, mom? Pow, pow, pow. And she's yeah. like, oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> and we just shot each other all the time. Yeah. So are you saying, wait, can snakes just spit and bite each other with, with venom that are of the same species? I don't Is that know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up while you guys play. play is, okay. All right. No, no, no. Be, be, because if they could... It might go a little something, a little like, something like this. <laughs> like this. Yo, what up, mom? <laughs> and she would go, "Oh, you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm really mad." <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like um, I don't. I mean, I, I, all this is kind of new information to me in terms of like, like what we could or couldn't do with venom. I, I do suspect that it would be a major medical issue until it became something that we would uh you know use for any kind of offensive or defensive uh uh position like it would just be something where like oh you have venom in your mouth also your tongue's deteriorating or you're at a higher risk for cancer oh so you're, or something. you're you're wondering what the trade off is because when uh, to to Bryce's initial hypothesis of all right all of a sudden like news today from Minx Russia where uh, a baby was born with venom in its mouth it's called old venom baby mouth uh <laughs> let's go to a live shot and it's like hello ah! it's me state television yeah, exactly and and like i i suspect instead of it being like the world famous venom spitting baby it would be like we need to save this child's life because this venom that it's secreting is not the, the human body is not built to contain it in the way we might be able to produce it we might be able to hack ourselves oh. to produce it but we would need a further modifications to actually like i, w I would imagine though it. that that there's something in the dna sequence where that would be super valuable where it's like uh we can make people immune to venom if we just ate this baby <laughs> That's Sorry. I couldn't think about anything. All right, for audio listeners, Brian <laughs> winced like I punched him in the stomach. Like as soon as he said it, I was as, as surprised as, as you were when those words came out of my mouth. Eat a Russian newborn. 
Maybe we could be immune to venom if we just ate that baby. We have found the upper limit of the show. We have found extremism on the show, and it is eating a newborn baby. All we need to do is eat that Russian baby. Oh, little baby Sergey! I just need that. And now I'll be immune to venom for the rest of my life. That is such a super villain plot, right? Like, it's just like, like, if only I have baby, I am immune to venom. It's like, wait, is venom that much of a problem for you? Like, are you dodging, like, snakes spitting venom at you? It's like, no, no just I am, in case. I am, I am just fearful of Spider-Man enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I wish anti-venom. <laughs> it's like, you know Spider-Man isn't real for now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it does seem like the jury is still out on... Uh, no, I have a hard... I have a, I have a stern <laughs> feeling. Eating the baby is a bad uh, idea. On uh, on how much immunity s snakes have, it does seem that snakes are immune to Deep other open. snakes who have the same species and the same type of venom. Some snakes, especially non-venomous snakes, may still have immunity to certain types of venom, but we're not... There's not really a hard and fast rule on that. So I would say the Russian baby probably... Probably pretty dangerous. Uh, it would be dangerous to the baby because that was no. My... It'd be fine. It would be fine for the baby. I mean, if if the baby is genetically secreting the protein, it would be immune to its own venom. Well, I mean, what did snakes are okay? But also, I mean, snakes, snakes have snakes have evolved for a long time. I guess my my, my but point just like uh, yeah, true, true, true. But, yeah, yeah. But... My 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 point was is is that like there's a lot of things that our bodies do that you know we are naturally occurring like cancer that we like uh that are really really harmful for us my suspicion without knowing anything about this fictitious russian baby <laughs> is that it would be detrimental to its health uh uh but you know who knows who knows it would be interesting because we would suddenly i imagine we would certainly learn a lot more about the human genome yeah um and and you know if we think if we if we think about what say that a crisper baby could be now on the menu is venom. venom. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too many words. We're talking about eating a baby and you talk about how crispy it is and then you put it on the menu. How crispy I, it is. I, I'm not comfortable with yeah, any of this. I'm going to have, gonna have <laughs> the Russian baby, please. Is that regular or extra crispy? Yeah, it's crisper. <laughs> is it's Oh my gosh! All right, enraged Russian billionaire. I hope that's a recurring <laughs> character on this show. <laughs> All right, I have one last news story for yeah. you here today. Um, the Germans. <laughs> uh, sorry, Bryce. Correctly pronounce it. It is the Germans. The Germans. Uh, there is a German. There is the Germans. They dance for an hour straight on new uh, special from uh, 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 Marvel. Uh, oh, have you not seen that? Baron Zemo dancing for an hour straight from uh, from, from Marvel. I mean, Falcon. Yeah, never mind. It's probably the best part of that episode. He's, he's doing this. No, he's doing like, like, like he's like it's like a hammer. Move. Oh, he's doing he, the he's doing the shoot. Well, he does, no, he no, does no, these no. It's, two. it's just kind of like oh, he's not even doing the shoot. It's no, oh no, no. He's awkward. Oh. Because they made one of the greatest villains in the MCU into young Sheldon. <laughs> he looks like him, doesn't he? He does. He looks a lot like Hawkeye too, or not Hawkeye, the wh whoever. Uh, well, no, he kind of looks like he kind of looks like all the white guys in the Marvel universe, doesn't he? Uh, so there's a zoo in the southwest of Germany. He is German, oh. Daniel Bruhl, I believe. And um, two dozen animals escaped. Uh, 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 what, what animal do you think escaped? Oh, oh. If it's weird things. It's got to be snakes. Yeah. Uh, right? uh, oh no, I was thinking Americans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brett, you want to take bro. second guesses, uh, both of yeah, you? Let's go. Like animals. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So we got snakes. We've heard humans. I don't know, th throw them out. Throw them out. Uh, 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 uh bears. Uh, no, 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 no. tigers, lions. No, 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 no. no, no. It's Bats? gotta be. It's, that would be it's, a lot it's, of tigers. It's, it's, it's in to German. Have. Wait, how um, many again? Two dozen. Two dozen tigers. Okay. That's a lot of tigers. What would, the, what would the funniest animal be? And I already have an answer. A sloth. Oh, I was because it say would be it. a God slow motion yeah. chase. Oh, <laughs> you'd be all like, you'd be like. He has his flashers on. Al Cowlings is on the phone. <laughs> I, I would just love it if just it, it's like, oh, the slots escaped. And as soon as the, the, the maintenance staff got there for their thrice annual maintenance visit, uh, they were shocked to learn that they were five feet outside the perimeter. <laughs> yes. 
Um, All right. Not not quite. Sloss would be really funny. Um, I mean, monkeys, of course. Monkeys would be. Hold uh, on. What type of monkey? What like, type of uh, monkey? Uh, uh, Davy Jones, Peter Thorne. <laughs> what? Baron Zemo. <laughs> People say they monkey around. Uh, 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 I don't know, like a, a gorilla, maybe two dozen gorillas, uh, two dozen big ass gorillas. Yeah. How, how, oh, oh, a question, uh, Your Honor. Wait, how, what kind of zoo? Many, I mean, like, many, two many, dozen gorillas is. is a, I mean, like many, the San Diego Zoo, I'm sure has two dozen. It is gorillas. two dozen animals. Two dozen of the same. Yeah, two th- two dozen animals. There were only same. four monkeys. Yeah. Um, two dozen lemurs. Lemurs would be funny. Um, what is the ultimate fun? What is the ultimate funny? The animal? ultimate funny. I can't beat sloth? sloth. Sloth is the funniest. Unless anybody sloth, else. Sloth is the funniest. Um, unless it's something like fish and they're out of water. That's also really funny. Oh, that's actually really. It'd be kind of dark. It'd be kind of like it a would Russian be, baby especially yeah. if like they showed up on stage with uh, uh, the string cheese incident and then never mind. Wow. I don't even know that one. It's they're fish. getting more. It's they're fish. The f- I'm it's uh, the a, fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I see. I'm gonna start making pyrotechnics jokes next. Okay. Uh, uh, well, it's not the ultimate funny animal, but you did get it right. Two dozen monkeys escaped a German zoo yes! for one single day. They they what kind of monkeys? Or was, or was it the variety? What pack? a day! Uh, they were. Um, uh, Barbary macaw, ma- macaques. Macaques. Oh, macaques. those are great. Can we get a can we get a, 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 a macaque picture up there? Yeah. Uh, so uh, they escaped. Um, and then they got they got found. They didn't go too far. They hung out around the forest where the zoo was. For oh my a, god! For the day they do look like they belong on an album cover. I believe they're all just like they're they're just. <laughs> That's There's mean. not a single one of them that doesn't look like they belong in a, on an album cover. I think these are all uh, uh, these uh, are great. Uh, Weezer albums. I love this one. He looks like he's he's terrorizing a town. I I don't know if that was the ones that are in the Snow Monkeys in in Nagano, or or that is that a, a similar breed because they look semi familiar to that when when you go to the the, the natural hot springs and. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Nagano, you see like the natural snow monkeys. I don't know if that's a similar a similar breed, or maybe uh, uh, I'm I'm confusing that with the monkey jungle in, in Homestead that also has like a, a, a tour where you just like have a couple boxes of dried fruit and the monkeys just ah uh, yeah like you're you're close. This is the you're thinking of the Japanese macaque. Yeah. Oh yeah. oh, there's a so no, they, they are, are they are macaques, yeah. but the. Uh, the the ones that escaped from Germany are from uh, North Africa. Gotcha, gotcha. But it, but it's the same 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 family there. I would highly it, recommend that if, if anybody who goes to visit Japan, it's like you know you, you do a day outside of Tokyo if you're there. But uh, I'm I'm, it was I'm sure the story says so. But but hmm. but like, do they just run around with you know darts and pop 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 pop? pop, pop. <laughs> um, I the story. This is a very short story here. We've we've spent more time on this story than the than the Associated Press did. But um, they they were spotted. That's because we do real journalism here. <laughs> <laughs> Zoo employees were unable to recapture them and lost track of them at one point. A few hours later, they were spotted, recaptured, and returned to their cages without incident. Which sounds like they which sounds like they leashed them. Like yeah, they got the like uh, they got the big like the dog catcher leashes. Like uh, like somebody overstayed their welcome on stage, and you had to put hook the em. hook on. Right? Yeah, em. yeah, no, yeah. the 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 Sandman came out and yeah. like you know swept them off stage. Uh, uh, the police said, "quote The animals apparently took advantage of the nice weather and spent the afternoon on the edge of a forest near the zoo. They just hung out. Uh, 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 um, yeah, yeah, it's me, a German police officer, Alpha Beta. Are you there?" Yeah. Ha! Here they come, walking down the streets. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly know the lyrics more than I do, so you're gonna have to. They're getting the funniest looks from everyone they meet. <laughs> hey, hey! There's the monkeys. Ah! People say the monkey around. <laughs> Wait. You want to do pics? Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's do pics. <laughs> what I want to do is. Really- I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> I don't, but it, I don't that's what I love lyrics. about we, you. We got the joke, and <laughs> so, now we're okay, out. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what do you guys got? What are you guys up to, dude? Uh, 
this will probably be my pick for spoiler in time later on cord killers. But um, uh, I, I almost certainly have mentioned it in passing recently, but I gave it two full watchings over the last weekend, once by myself. And then again, like, like uh, uh, you, uh, when, when, when you have a teenager, you don't want to lose credit, right? You're, it's just yeah. like, Hey, I need you to trust me. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, the Manhattan project is great. It's about a teenager who builds, who figures out that this random company in his local town of Ithaca, New York, uh, uh, is, is creating the world's highest grade plutonium, uh, and, uh, it, it, it hooks up with a 17 year old wannabe journalist. They go, they steal it. And she's like, great. I'll write an expose. He's like, or what if I made an atomic bomb? Eey. And she's like, what? And he's like, come on, it'd be a much better story that way. And so she lets him, he builds an atomic bomb. It's got John Lithgow in it. Uh, uh, it's Great. This is a new movie. No, 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 no. Old movie. This is 1982, uh, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, 86. 86. Oh, my God. It's so great. There's basically three set pieces. There's him uh, very cleverly stealing the plutonium. There's him learning and, and, and with almost no dialogue, learning the fundamentals of how a, an atomic bomb is constructed him uh, uh, extracting the plutonium from the gel or whatever. Uh, and then there's like the third act is he bumps into crazy science types uh, because his, his idiotic original idea was to go to a science fair and then say, here's I my project. Atomic bomb. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but then instead uh, it's, it's got the guy who, um, who was the dad in Frasier. He was also the evil general in the iron giant in yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And and so because it's a movie about an atomic bomb, it ends with one of the best disarming a bomb scenarios you've ever seen. Gotcha. It's so great. I I yeah, highly highly recommend it. It's great. Nice. The Manhattan. Where'd you, where'd you watch that? Amazon. Uh, uh, you know what? I went. Uh, the only place I could find it was um, uh, JustWatch.com. Told me that I had to do the free trial of Cinemax on Amazon. Ah. So uh, okay. remind me to cancel Cinemax immediately. <laughs> Justin, you got a pick? Yeah. I have uh, started watching a show that I love, that I'm shocked took me uh, uh, this long for nobody recommended to me except for Amazon's algorithm, uh, and they correctly guessed that I would love it. And that is the Channel 4 series, The Toast of London. Oh, you told me about this. And uh, you, spoiler alert. You, you, were, you were not shy in your recommendation. Have oh, you watched I see, it yet? I, I see why. I, I have not watched it yet, but, but I've heard the pitch. And S Spoiler alert for what Brian's going to be talking about <laughs> for the next uh, two months, the second that he watches it. This is, I believe, 2015? 2012, and still oh, ongoing, says IMDb. Still ongoing. So uh, it is a series starring Matthew Berry, or Matt Berry, as uh, a stage actor in London. It's got a fair amount of the uh, uh, surreal reality elements where, like, things are, are kind of, like, heightened and ridiculous for, for no reason except that it's like the most funny scenario that could happen. Uh, Matt Berry is very Matt Berry. Matt, I mean, like it's, <laughs> it's, it, rare, you, it's rare when somebody's personal pronoun or personal name is, is uh, uh, also an adjective. Well, and it's <laughs> funny because the show is about how ridiculous the Matt Berry persona is as it, as he like has applied in what we do in the shadows and, and so many other things, but he's just this like, pompous theater actor that you kind of can't help but root for and there's like it's really smart there's this running gag that like like he's a, a very serious theater actor and like he needs to be taken seriously and of course he's always like crapped upon and everything and then the running gag is that the theater show that he is in is like not only picketed you never know what it is you just know that it's picketed when he walks into his dressing room. He's always late. And as he walks into the backstage area, it's just like Satan and like, this is uh, the S word, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then you just, the end of episodes or whenever they're cutting away, he just runs up on stage and is just 
pelted with random garbage. So it's just like <laughs> that's like the 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 craft for which he is plying is just totally <laughs> crapped upon. And he mostly makes his money doing voiceovers where he could just do like Matthew Berry voice for various stupid things. Uh, it's really funny. Uh uh I if, if you like the following things, what we do in the shadows or and uh, Flight of the Concords, you will like this style of humor. Uh, it has been my new little comedy binge. Uh, where where can I find it? Netflix. Okay. Right on. Yeah. I thought you said Amazon. Uh, no, 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 no. Netflix. Oh, okay. Netflix. I said uh, uh, Cinemax toast. over Amazon for mine. Gotcha. Yeah. Toast, toast uh, of so London. it is, it is uh, right there. Toast of London. Nice. Uh, I have two picks uh, the, this week. I I, uh, I had known about this for a little while, and I never really got a chance to play with it. Um, but uh, have you heard of Swift Playgrounds? No, Swift Playgrounds. Uh, this is uh, an app that uh, they've they, that they made for uh, the iPad and and on the Mac uh, to learn how to code. Uh, how to learn how to code using using Swift. So you play oh. you play a little. Uh, the basic one is they give you these little three D worlds and these little characters, and you write code uh, to make to, to to make the little guy move or to uh, change the world, uh, what have you. Uh, it's really cool. There, I I blasted through the two. I guess um, I guess they have two like kind of starter learn to code one and learn to code two sections. I I blasted through those over the weekend. Um, it, you, you probably, but I, I, I know a little bit of coding and programming stuff. So some of that stuff I already kind of knew about and I had all day to do with them. Um, but, but they're really cool and they're a free app. Um, and even if you don't want to learn Swift, you still get a little bit of understanding of like coding syntax and what, how to think about problems. I've talked about other games before, like, um, human resource machine and, and 7 billion humans, which are like programming games and yeah. kind of learn how to program or the concepts um but this is like very uh you know very hands-on you're writing actual swift syntax but not really code because it's all this 3d world where, where does swift usually and end up um and and mm -hmm. and and uh, just for anybody who would like to help me out uh brian yeah. at .com is where you can write me but um i i, I want to start goofing around with writing scripts for um, little Arduino's thing, I've, 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 so Swift, I've, uh, Swift is the iOS like right. Swift okay. is for yeah. I, for iOS apps, Mac apps, Apple TV stuff. Yeah. It's an it's an Apple Apple makes this app. Got it. Um, and so this is kind of all. But it's yeah. Stuff. But it uh, from from what I've been able to gather is that it's it's a a fairly intuitive language because what they want to do is lower the bar so as many people who are creating like nice apps can 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 do so yeah i would say for for that that that's probably something that would be on a different uh a probably different language like, than, like, like than a swift. python thing or something or i don't know yeah i'm making uh, stuff up if only there was a third Corey, yeah the Corey is nodding thing. python okay. yeah yeah okay um but uh I, I thought that was really cool um doing it they they, they make it pretty easy they've got hints um, I kind of bumped up against it a few times it it's um i think it's it's relatively fully featured the two two packages the two playgrounds that i did um but it's not um there's some bits of polish that that i think you might have to google just a little bit to, to figure yeah. out why you can't figure this thing out um but I, I thought that's pretty cool and if you have an ipad or a, a mac device um that's a neat thing and uh uh speaking of my other pick is the new apple macbook air i got one of these over the weekend my friend hey. my friend joe sent me some money that he owed me and uh, I said, "Oh, hey, I could get a new laptop." Um, and this thing's pretty cool. It's uh, it's really light. Uh, I can carry it with one hand uh, without like, like, like. Yeah. It's not technically one handed. Like, is one hand. Um, oh, there he goes. Got it here. Yeah. So, oh, oh, flash, flash out thin. Flash that, flash that thinness. Yeah. It's nice. still, it's still thinner. It's about a as thin as your finger. Uh, but uh, the battery life on it is really cool. This has got the at the new M1 chip. That they put in it um yeah you want to know what that that was a big decision that i had to make uh when i was getting my macbook pro because i wanted to use it as a primary work machine and i wanted to mm -hmm. um use it as a uh, uh on the road editing uh, uh a machine yeah and i wound up going with the intel chip instead of the m1 stuff just because it played better with the adobe uh, uh the adobe stuff right uh but Which i was is I like was, still the case 
what which is still the case yeah like, like the photoshop that they have working on the m1 chip like works but a lot of stuff is not there and then the and, intel rosetta version like you can't save in some way and that's that was like it was just it i, I didn't want to roll the dice and be like all right this is only semi-functional until uh adobe and uh, gets their crap together with m1 so i wound up going with the intel chip which i'm happy for because it is a more productive machine uh right now but i was i was definitely kind of bummed that i didn't get to take advantage of uh what is uh, apparently a really really powerful chip it's pretty cool i uh uh, I haven't really sat down and done like a super like uh, you like know dedicated benchmark benchmark test right, but like I don't have to think about the battery really at all. I mean, uh, you doing the, the doing the Swift Playgrounds, which has like a 3D rendering part to it because it's like you're playing a game. Yeah, like I still got like four, five, six hours on it without nice. really needing to charge. Like it, it's just it's really cool and 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 the. I have not tried to use it. I'm probably not going to really try to use like Adobe stuff on it. Yeah. Um, at least right now while it's still not, not developed for it. But the Rosetta stuff is like really kind of invisible. You just click it and it runs and you don't really think about it much. Um, so I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I, I like using the playgrounds. I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to try and make an app. I kind of want to make a little like a little phone game. Oh, a little, a little Bryce app. A little Bryce app. Oh, um, so yeah. Stay stay tuned. Yes. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, uh, I think that'll do it for picks. We've got kind of a little shorter episode today, but uh, I think it was plenty of fun. Yeah. Uh, for Brian and Justin, I've been Bryce. It's been weird. Hey, look at that. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. <clears throat> um, do we after wanna... things or no? I we don't. I don't believe we have an. We don't have an email. Um. Double check. I, 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 we also have plenty of other things <laughs> that are very pressing. Yeah. Uh, uh, so let's plan on this week. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Well, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out with us for weird things. Uh, we will be back uh, in a few hours with Cord Killers. Cord Killers. That's right. Uh, um, how about that? How about that Hannibal this week? That was very really good. I watched it this morning. Wow. Oh, that was great. Yeah, oh, that was incredible. Like, like it, it, I was like, man, it's it's almost like it's a big like. Mm. Mm. He's, he's a bad guy, and it's he's... like they were about to get him. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, but he always seems to. But he always gets his man. He al- he always, he always eats, eats his mountain. way out of the cheese. <laughs> That's classic. A classic German saying: the monkeys yes. know. <laughs> the monkeys, the monkeys know. know. The macaques. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>